One of the best ways to understand what's happening on the battlefield around you is to be able to identify what's happening in the sky above you. After watching this comparison guide, you'll be able to do just that with both the German and British planes, as well as their corresponding airdrops. But stick around to the end as there are a couple sneaky planes that look a lot alike and will fool the untrained eye. What do you say his name was? Gabatron. Hello everyone, I am Gebatron, and before we get into it, I'd just like to announce that I'm doing another Ask Me Anything or AMA video in celebration of breaking the 6,000 subscriber mark. Yay! So feel free to ask me anything down in the comments, uh, whether it's about games, the channel, PC hardware, or whatever strikes your fancy. Simply put AMA at the start of your question to help differentiate it from questions, you know, regarding this video. People that ask a question for the AMA will also be entered to win some prizes. I have Steam keys for Hell Let Loose, Beach Invasion 1944, as well as some keys for the Hell Let Loose Skull Bucket DLC. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you'll participate. Alright, Update 14 introduced the British to Hell Let Loose, and that means new airplanes and airdropped assets to learn. Being able to identify these planes and their drops is going to greatly increase your awareness on the battlefield, which is going to lead to better play and will allow you to be able to react more quickly and plan more appropriately. This comparison guide is between the Germans and British, but I have made guides to the Soviet and US factions as well, so check those out after this so you can identify what's happening no matter what battlefield you find yourself on. I'll also put that playlist in the end screen. So let's just start from the top of Commander Orders with Airhead. We aren't covering how these orders work here, but if you want to learn how they work, then check the video at the top right. The Germans drop their airhead from the Heinkel, or HE-111, while the British use the Avro Lancaster. These are both low altitude drops, and the differences here are pretty stark, with the most obvious being that the HE-111 is a two-engine airplane, while the Lancaster is a four-engine airplane. Another noticeable difference is that the Lancaster has a twin-tail design. There are plenty differences here, including wing shape, size, nose shape, etc. Pretty easy to tell. What is not so easy to tell apart is the actual airhead itself. They're identical. Both dropped with a red parachute, both the pallet with boxes stacked on it. So if you saw what plane dropped the airhead, this won't be a problem. But if you did not see the plane, the best way to find out if this is friendly or enemy is to check your map. A friendly airhead will show an icon, while an enemy one won't. If you want to learn how to improve your airhead drops and learn about some airhead tactics, then check the video at the top right. Moving on, we have Ammo Drop. Probably won't see these too often, but they do happen from time to time. These again are both low altitude drops done by the HE-111 and Avro Lancaster respectively, so we won't talk about that again. Instead, let's focus on the drop. You're not going to be able to tell a difference in the ammo crates themselves while they're in the air, as both are just a flat box on a pallet, but the parachute is a dead giveaway. The Germans with the red, while the British use a dark green parachute. It's important to note here that both the German ammo drop and airhead use a red parachute, and to the untrained eye they look alike, especially off in the distance, so here's a side-by-side -side look of an ammo drop and airhead so you can see the differences. The ammo drop is a large flat box while the airhead is smaller and has its box stacked in more of, you know, like a pyramid formation. Become familiar with these differences so you don't overreact to an ammo drop in a match, or worse, underreact to an airhead. Okay, on to supply drop. Again, each nation brings their respective bombers, so let's focus on the asset itself. Both drops are cylinders, but there are plenty differences here starting with the parachute color. Germans again with the red, and British are using dark green again. The German drop looks like a torpedo or rocket, complete with fins at the top and a pointy nose at the bottom. The British use just a simple cylinder design with a couple of ribs. 
Supply drops contain 100 supplies, and it's a pretty good idea to track these down as they often lead you directly to places where the enemy either is planning to build a garrison or already has. And you will see a lot of supply drops in Hell Let Loose. Now let's look at the recon planes. The first thing you'll notice here is that these are flying at a higher altitude. The Germans use the FW-189 Uhu, while the British bring the de Havilland Mosquito. The German Uhu has what's known as a twin boom design. It also has narrow wings with a gondola, or pod, at the center. The Mosquito looks more like your standard two-engine airplane. Shorter, wider wings with a single tail. The sooner you identify recon planes, the better, as you are able to hide from them under certain types of cover. Learn more about that at the top right. Recon planes are also often followed by other forms of air support, such as bombing runs, strafing runs, or precision strikes. Speaking of precision strikes, it's really hard to catch these because they come in so fast, but the Germans bring the Ju-87 Stuka dive bomber while the British deploy two Spitfires. Now it's going to be hard to see these before you hear them, especially the Stuka as it comes in from a high altitude then quickly drops down. If you're in a stationary tank, you're going to want to move the instant you hear that siren, and even then it might be too late. Same with the Spitfires. Here we don't get a siren, but their engines go from being quiet to loud very quickly. So if you hear that, then it's time to move, but just like before, it's probably already too late. What I'll do here is separate them so you can hear them individually before we move on. The strafing run is pretty much the same in terms of by the time you hear it or see it, it's already too late. The Germans bring the ME-109 with its yellow nose, straight tipped wings, and grey paint scheme, while the British bring the Spitfire with its elliptical wings and greenish grey paint scheme. These come and go so fast, there really isn't much you can do about it. So now the bombing run. Here we see our bombers return, but you'll notice they're at a higher altitude just like the recon planes. If you see high altitude bombers coming near your position, then you know it's time to spread the word and find cover. Now there is one more comparison I think we should look at and that's between the German bombing run with the HE-111 at high altitude and the British recon plane with their Mosquito at high altitude. These two planes are similar in design and it's hard to tell the difference between the two at first glance. The most dramatic difference that I can see is in the shape of the wings. The HE-111 has very symmetrical wings while the Mosquito's wings are straight across the front but angle forward at the rear. This is going to be a hard one to tell. Uh, what differences do you see? Now there are differences in sound between all these planes, but it's very hard to distinguish those differences, especially if you're not dedicating your life to hell at loose. So what I recommend is to use your ears on the battlefield to help direct your eyes. Instead of listening for the difference between the HE-111 and the Lancaster, simply make sure you are looking above every time you hear a plane so you can identify it. Then you can go from there. Okay, uh, remember to take part in that AMA if you feel so inclined. Just remember to put AMA at the start of your question. However, feel free to ask any other questions this video may have raised for you. Uh, I hope you learned something new here. Please do all the things that help me beat the algorithm. Check the description for other ways to support the channel. Subscribe so you don't miss anything else. And consider membership to get early access to new videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the support and see you in the next one.